Hey guys, in this lesson, let's talk about random forest. Random forest is the top machine learning algorithm asked in interviews. And in this video, we will dive deep into random forest. After watching this video, you will be able majority of interview questions related to random forest. Let's get started with looking at some interview questions. How does random forest work? What are the ways in which they improve upon individual decision trees? Why is a random forest random? What are the hyperparameters of a random forest? Why can random forest help reduce variance? Pros and cons of a random forest. These are all fundamental questions related to random forest. And we will go over all of them in this video. Specifically, we'll look at what is a random forest, how does it work? There are four steps in the algorithm and we'll go over all of them one by one. And what are the hyperparameters of a random forest? How does random forest reduce variance? And finally, we will summarize the pros and cons of random forest. Okay, let's start with reviewing what is a random forest algorithm. A random forest is an ensemble learning method for both classification and regression tasks. It operates by constructing multiple decision trees. Each tree is trained on a subset of samples using a subset of features. We'll talk about the benefit of doing this later on. So once it constructs multiple decision trees at the training time, it outputs the class that is the mode of the classes for classification tasks or mean prediction for regression tasks of the individual trees. Here is a diagram showing how it works. So in this case, there are three decision trees, one, two, and three. The random forest algorithm looks at the results of all these trees and then take majority voting or averaging and then output the final result. At a high level, that's how a random forest works. Now let's look at the details and understand how it works step by step. There are four steps in the algorithm to construct a random forest. We first draw a random bootstrap sample of size n. We randomly choose n examples from the training dataset with replacement. Here is a diagram showing with replacement. So when we draw a sample from a population, we put it back before we draw another sample. So essentially, it means that one training example may appear multiple times in the bootstrap sample. The second step is that we grow a decision tree from the bootstrap sample. At each node, we randomly select D features without replacement. For example, if there are 20 features, we choose a random five as candidates for constructing the best split. So here's a diagram showing without replacement. When we draw a sample from a population, we do not put it back before drawing another sample. So there's no duplication in the sample from the population. Once we select these D features, we split the node using the feature that provides the best split according to the objective function. For example, maximizing the information gain. And then we repeat steps one to two K times. Essentially, we will build K decision trees. Finally, we aggregate the prediction by each tree to assign the class label by majority vote for classification tasks or taking the average for regression task. Once we understand this four-step algorithm, it's easy for us to understand why random forest random. Random forest constructs a large number of decision trees with random bootstrap samples from the training data. As its tree is constructed, we take a random subset of features before each node is split. So from step one and step two, we introduce some randomness when constructing a random forest. That's why random forest is random. Now, for some of you who have heard about the bagging algorithm, bagging is an ensemble learning method. You may know that random forest is a modification of the bagging algorithm. The only difference between random forest and a bagging algorithm is in step two. In step two, we randomly select D features without replacement. And we use these D features as candidates for constructing the best split. For bagging algorithm, we actually consider all features to be candidates for constructing the best split. That's the only difference between random forest and bagging. Okay, now let's look at the hyperparameters involved in a random forest model. 
The most important hyperparameter is the number of trees, k, in a random forest. In step 3, we mentioned that we need to construct k descending trees. The larger the number of trees, the better the performance of the random forest model at the expense of an increased computational cost. So we want to construct many decision trees, but we also need to consider the computational cost of doing that. There are also some less commonly used hyperparameters in practice, meaning that we can use some default values instead of spending lots of time and effort tuning those hyperparameters. One hyperparameter is the size of the bootstrap sample n to consider for each tree. Typically, this is chosen to be equal to the number of training samples in the original training dataset. Another hyperparameter is the number of features d to consider at each split. For classification tasks, the default is d is square root of m, where m is the number of features in the training dataset. For regression tasks, we can use d equals m over 3. Again, m is the number of features in the training dataset. So those are the hyperparameters for a random forest model. Next, let's look at how does random forest reduce variance. This is really important to understand because there are lots of interview questions related to this topic. We will touch on some formulas, but don't worry, they are not hard to understand. If you can follow my logic, then it's easy for you to understand how random forest reduce variance. Okay, let's first look at average of ID random variables. So if we have k, i, i, d, independent and identically distributed random variables, each with variance sigma squared, then we look at the average of them, and the average should have variance sigma squared over k, right? We know this based on the central limit theorem. If the variables are simply id, identically distributed, but not necessarily independent with a positive pairwise correlation rho, the variance of the average is rho sigma squared plus 1 minus rho over k sigma squared. The proof of this formula is out of scope of this video, but if you are interested, I have the link in the video description so that you can learn about the proof of this formula. So based on this, we know that as k increases, the second term disappears, right? Because k is in the denominator, but the first term remains. So it means that the larger the pairwise correlation, the larger the variance of the average. In the context of a random forest, it means that the size of the correlation of pairs of decision trees limits the benefit of averaging. Now, in terms of how random forests reduce variance, the idea is to reduce the variance of the average by reducing the correlation between decision trees. This is achieved in step 1 and step 2 of the algorithm. In step 1, we use a bootstrap sample to grow a tree. So each tree will be built based on different bootstrap samples. In step 2 of the algorithm, we select d features to be considered to split the tree node. At each split in the learning process, it inspects a random subset of the features instead of all features, which reduce the correlation between the trees, meaning that it creates decorrelated trees. Creating decorrelated trees is a very important concept in random forest. If we reduce d, we reduce the correlation between any pair of trees and therefore reduce the variance of the average. So that's how random forests reduce variance by creating decorrelated decision trees. Okay, at this point, you have learned all the important concepts related to random forests, which will help you ace interview questions. Finally, let's look at the pros and the cons of random forests. First of all, a random forest has a better generalization performance than individual decision tree due to randomness. We have talked about how random forests introduce randomness in the algorithm. It helps to decrease the model's variance, therefore low overfitting. So it corrects for decision tree's habit of overfitting the training data. Secondly, a random forest doesn't require much parameter tuning. Using full-grown trees seldom costs much and result in less tuning parameter. A random forest model is less sensitive to outliers in the dataset. Finally, a random forest model generates feature importance, which is useful when interpreting the results. In scikit-learn, you can use the building function to get the feature importance from a random forest model. It's literally called feature underscore importances underscore. So you can use this building function 
to get the importance of different features. You can plot them and see which feature contributes the most to the prediction. In terms of the cons of a random forest model, it is computationally expensive. It is fast to train, but quite slow to create predictions once trained. More accurate models require more decision trees, which means using the model becomes slower. So that's the downside of a random forest model. But overall, for fast, simple, flexible, predictive modeling, random forest is probably one of the most useful pragmatic algorithms available today. All right, that's it for this lesson. We learned quite a few concepts around random forest. We learned how random forest works, the four-step algorithm, and what are the high parameters of a random forest model. We also learned why random forest reduces variance compared with a decision tree model. And finally, we look at pros and cons of a random forest algorithm. That's it for this lesson. I will see you in the next one.